This is part 47 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the significance of DB Context class in Entity Framework Core. One of the very important classes in Entity Framework Core is the DB Context class. This is the class that we use in our application code to interact with the underlying database. It is this class that manages the database connection and is used to retrieve and save data in the database. To use the DB Context class in our application, we create a class that derives from the DB Context class provided by Entity Framework Core. This class is related to the models of our application, so let's place it in the models folder. You can name this class anything you want. I'm going to name it App DB Context. As you can see, this is a regular C# -sharp class. For this class to behave like the DB Context class, we make it derive from the DB Context class provided by Entity Framework Core. This class is in Microsoft dot Entity Framework Core namespace. Let's bring it in by pressing Control period and then the Enter key. For this DB Context class to be able to do any useful work, it needs an instance of the DB Context Options class. The DB Context Options instance carries the configuration information such as the connection string to use, the database provider to use, etc. The easiest way to pass an instance of the DB Context Options class is by creating a constructor. So for this app DB Context class, let's define the constructor. And then Let's pass DB Context Options class as a parameter to the constructor. Notice this class has a generic parameter. We want these DB Context Options to be applied to our App DB Context class. So let's specify this as the argument for the generic parameter. Next, we need to provide a name for this parameter. I'm going to call it Options. We now want to pass these options to this base DB context class. We're going to do that by calling the base class constructor using the base keyword. Notice from the IntelliSense, there are two overloaded versions of this DB context class. We're going to use this overloaded version, which expects an instance of the DB context options class. So let's pass the options to our base DB context class using its second overloaded constructor. We'll discuss more about this DB context options class in our next video when we specify the database provider and the connection string that we want to use. The next important thing that we need to include in our app DB context is a DB set property for each type that we have in our project. At the moment, within our employee management project, we only have one type and that is this employee class. So let's create a DB set property for this employee type within our app DB context class. DB set of employee and let's name the property employees. We'll be using this property to query and save instances of the employee class. The link queries that we write against this DB set of employee property will be translated into SQL queries against the underlying database. We'll see this in action in our upcoming videos. To use the DB context class in our application, we create a class that derives from the DB context class provided by Entity Framework Core. For this DB context class to be able to do any useful work, it needs an instance of the DB context options class. We pass the instance of the DB context options class to the base DB context class by calling its constructor using the base keyword as you can see right here. Finally, for every type that we have in our application, we create the corresponding DB set property. At the moment, within our application, we only have one entity type which is employee. So we created a DB set property for the employee type. We use this property to query and save instances of the employee class. The link queries that we write against this DB set property will be translated into SQL queries against the underlying database. We look at this in action in our upcoming videos. Now, to connect our application to a database using this DB context class, we need to configure two more things. Which database provider do we want to use? SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, etc. And the connection string to that database. We'll discuss how to configure both of these things in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.